Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to finish up the scrap pile surface grinder, and this will be the final video in that series. So thanks for uh, dropping by, guys. Appreciate it, and uh, stick with me. Should be fun. We'll talk at the other end. Okay, guys, here we go. We're going to repurpose this old uh, makeshift bench grinder that I built uh, years ago, and it's got a good one horse motor on it. Should power this grinder. And uh, we'll even use the switch that's on this thing. It's still in really good shape. I am a little bit iffy about using pillow block bearings for the main shaft to support this constant contact wheel. But we're going to give it a shot. These are in pretty good shape. And uh, it's got a one inch stainless steel shaft and that's what the wheel was made for. So the framework at least will get us a couple of steps ahead. And I have a backup plan in case those pillow block bearings just don't work out. Alright, so we're just sort of eyeballing the center here. We'll put a tape measure on that. We want to get that contact wheel in the center of the uh, slide for the magnet. It's an 18 inch magnet. We've got a 36 inch slide. So we put the constant contact wheel in the middle. We should get most of the use out of that magnet. And these are going to be our stands to get that thing up in the air. Now rather than stand it up straight, I wanted it uh, laying horizontal. But I wanted it up high enough to get that wheel over the top because we've got some more equipment to mount to the back side of this thing. There we go. i get this sort of stood up there where we think we might need it. And we'll get it tacked into place. And get our wheel about center of that magnet. And we've got a four inch wide wheel and a six inch wide magnet. So, and that wheel can be pushed side to side a little bit on that shaft. So we've got plenty of wiggle room. And you're going to notice on the magnet, I've got a, it was a machining block to sort of uh, line that shaft up. All right, this is the axle off the trailer. This is one of the hubs, obviously, and the wheel bearings inside. They're just a tapered wheel bearing and a race. And what we're going to do is we're gonna cut the end off this axle and we're going to use these parts as our idler pulley and tracking, belt tracking device. You know, up in that area somewhere. So we're going to knock the bearing races out of this. And these races are in pretty rough shape. So went ahead and ordered some bearing races from Amazon. And we cut off a section of that axle. And we're going to split it open a little bit to make it a little wider. And we have some 2 inch pipe it's going to fit those bearing braces perfectly and this is going to be the stop in our hub for those races to ride up against and we're just gonna get that centered just about right so we can use the dust cap off the end of this and we've got our spacer in there to keep these bearings at a proper distance from either end of this hub that we're building. And we got a little hole in there and we're going to just spot weld that so the centerpiece stays in place. And of course our belt's going to ride on this thing so we'll make sure it's nice and clean and round. Alright, we're getting this bearing number off here so we can order some new ones from Amazon. They came in about a day and uh, we just used the old ones to move forward so we could keep building until they got here. We replaced them. So there's some brand new bearings in this thing. There's a way you can support Big Dog Forge by using the Amazon link on the front page of the YouTube channel. It costs you absolutely nothing, but I get a small commission from every purchase, no matter what you purchase off Amazon. So if you want to check that out, there, that's there for you.
Okay, so we're going to set this aside and we're going to start working on our tension arm. Here it is. Okay, we needed to poke a hole in that piece of steel. So these two pillow block bearings are going to support another one inch stainless steel shaft. They just didn't have a one inch drill so I had to poke a hole real quick. And we're going to offset that wheel towards the back to take up a little more of that slack. And these are going to be the tracking parts for tracking the belt back and forth. So we're going to pretty much um, replicate what I had built on the 2x72 belt grinder as a tracking mechanism. They seem to be pretty stable and work really well. So for these holes I had drill bits the right size and I didn't have any fingers small enough to just poke the holes so this is going to take a little longer if you don't mind. Alrighty. There we go. And we have to cut this uh, piece of tubing a long way. These are scraps left over from cutting out the um, table and stand portion of this particular piece of machinery so we're trying to put as much of it to use as possible and we'll end up with a few bits and pieces but that's all right there we go and this is the hole that's going to be for the bolt which will actually actuate the tracking pivot there we go. And then we'll get this guy welded together. It's a fairly small MIG welder. Um, I've had real good luck with it welding fairly heavy stuff like this in the past. If you get a good chamfer on that metal so you can get a good root pass and then uh, either stitch it like I'm doing here or uh, multiple passes as you weld material heats up and it flows a lot better but I've had this little machine since 1995 I believe little Hobart handler 120 and it's just phenomenal it just takes a beating and keeps going all right that guy cooled off and this nut is going to be what's going to hold our adjustment bolt. Alrighty. And then our spindle off of our trailer axle and I'm just guessing as to where I want this thing as far as uh, you know pressure on the pivot and uh, where the bolt goes it's just all designed by eye and you can see some funny red sparks coming off of that thing looks like sparklers it's actually um, hot dip galvy on that thing and I cleaned off as much as I could but uh, and like three fans blowing to make sure that that uh, smoke was getting away from me and it worked out pretty good at least it didn't die or anything so all right and there's our pulley that we made so it's really a hub on a spindle with those bearings but it's a uh, sort of an idler pulley for a belt at this point and it's all semantics there we go and there's our dust cap so on the back side of that we'll be taking care of the uh, bearing on the back side here shortly because we don't want any dust getting in there either and I'll show you how we're gonna do that here in a few minutes all right so I need my wrench there we go and uh, we'll get this thing tightened up on here good and tight now we do have a little bit of play and a little bit of slot back and forth in that hinged mechanism there. So we'll have to compensate with for that on the machine 
under the bearings to align everything, but we've built plenty of uh, wiggle room into this machine to make sure things are working. And you're going to notice that I have that motor sort of mounted and it's a little crooked. It's just a temporary mount because I'm not convinced that those uh, pillow block bearings are going to handle that constant contact wheel very well. So we're kind of keeping things a little bit loose to begin with. And we're going to get our tension spring on the bottom of that pivot arm. Alright, let's get a belt on this thing. See what she looks like. Alright, there's our tension arm with our axle hub. And it looks good. And it seems to work really well. The uh, riser for the magnet works really well. And there's enough tension on the spring for the belt. But you can see the vibration in that belt. And this thing is just making a horrific growling noise and it's all coming from those pillow block bearings so all right the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little surgical tape and we're going to run it around the center of this tracking wheel what that'll do is raise the center of it and it'll act a little bit like it's uh sort of tapered off on both sides it's a trick we used to use in the um, lumber industry on the conveyor belts to get them to run in the center and that's going to sort out that tracking we'll go ahead and uh, do a little bit more permanent solution later on but uh, to get us through this all right we're going to get rid of these pillow block bearings we've got our other wheel and we've taken the bearings out of it we've got another piece of pipe we're going to put another separator in there to keep those bearings apart we're going to press these into place and uh, we're going to use this new stainless steel shaft we've got. So I split that down the center. This is another piece of that axle. And it was driving it apart to make it a little bigger because it doesn't fit quite snugly enough. Fits good and snug now. Another hole. Weld it in place once we get it centered up. And took it over to the lathe and cleaned up the end of those stops. And we'll get our new races in there. And again, ordered brand new races and bearings from uh, Amazon. And they were here next day. All right. And this is our new axle. And this is what we're going to mount our... All right, so the axle clamped down to these two blocks. The magnet's holding them at a 90 degree angle. And it's clamped all down to the magnet. So that shaft is going to be absolutely square with the magnet in all directions. And we've got a couple of pieces of quarter inch by one that we've mounted on the framework. And we're just going to tack this in place all right, we'll get this all pulled off of here so that we can do some full welds on it. And I can take the bearings out so they don't take any damage while I'm doing those full welds. There we go. We got the welds done. The magic of YouTube. And we'll get this thing mounted back on there real quick. Now, we've got some real heavy veg tan leather. This is like uh, 12, 14 ounce leather. Real heavy stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a couple of grease seals out of this. We'll soak them in grease and oil and they will swell up. And we're going to put one of these on the idler pulley or the tracking pulley wheel, whatever you want to call it, and then one of these will go on the back side of the main shaft so that we can minimize the amount of grinder dust that can get into these uh, bearings from the back side. The other good thing about this particular position and the way these bearings are set up is the pulley that we're going to be putting on here 
is concaved and it's just bigger than the two inch pipe so it will act as a guard as well to keep that dust away a little like a slinger plate for a bearing if you used to use in machinery years ago plate would spin around and throw things away from bearings and bushings there we go get those guys tightened down on there all right so this is some really heavy canvas it used to be a, a uh, welding blanket and I've sewn it into these um, guards to cover up the track so we can get the grinding dust off of our bearings wheels and tracks so we don't wear anything out this stuff's very abrasive obviously and we don't want to allow it to eat things up too quickly so these will simply drape over either ends of the track and slide back and forth with a magnet and protect things and as they wear out we can replace them and I sewed these up on the uh, stitcher that I built. And at the other end of these things, I sewed a uh, little pocket in them so that we can put some weight on the ends of them to keep them pulling in the right direction. There we go. All right. This is our switch off of our bench grinder. Our makeshift bench grinder we built and uh, should power this thing up pretty well use our blacksmith scissors there to trim that uh, insulation back and just some electrical tape I didn't have a, a wire nut to put on there but we'll give it the old wrap and fold and rewrap and it'll work out just fine We'll put a little strain relief on this thing after we get it in there. So the cord stays in place. I don't want to trip on it and yank the uh, electrical cord out of it. There we go. Excellent. All right. So last thing we have to do here before we can try this thing out is put a handle on it. you got to be able to pull the magnet back and forth. So we're mounting a piece of uh, that's quarter inch by one to the front of this where these existing bolts were. And we've got a handle off an old, an old slag hammer handle. And we're gonna weld that on a little bit of an angle. We don't want it in line so our hand goes under that grinding wheel. There we go. They seem to be working really well. Fire it up, it's running smooth in all directions. There we go. Let's give it a shot. Alrighty, there we go. Get a belt on this. This is a uh, belt that's been cut down from a six inch wide thing. Pretty good belts. Um, to a four inch wide. Works pretty well. We're going to start turning the star wheel down below and bringing this up to contact the knife. And there you go. Give you a little light show and show you what it looks like in the dark here. So anyway, I wanted to say thanks to all my patrons. You guys rock. I wanted to say thank you to all the subscribers and the new subscribers especially. You guys are awesome. And remember, share the videos. It helps out the little channel. If you need to buy anything on Amazon, there's an affiliate link on the front page of the uh, YouTube channel. Anything you buy on Amazon through there, you get a small commission. It really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you a penny. There you go, guys. This thing works like nobody's business. Very impressed with it. All that's left is to give her a name. We'll have to figure that one out, guys. All right, guys. There we go. So now we've got a surface grinder in the shop. Um, finding a place where it was a little tough. We're running out of floor space, but uh, seems to be working really well. And uh, it's going to be really instrumental in uh, helping out with the Damascus we've got upcoming. We've got a lot of that to do and finishing up a knife for Mr. Al Anderson as well. So anyway, guys, thanks for dropping by. Really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.